My name's Damien and welcome back to the rudder and welcome aboard Antoinette. We've been out on anchor overnight and today we're going to look at the Garmin chart plotter and depth finder to really assist your life on the boat. In this video we're going to look at two things, the two main ways I use uh, this Garmin touchscreen chart plotter. One's at anchor, which is what we are right now, and the other one when we're underway. So we'll go through how I use it at anchor and how it's saved my bacon a few times, and then uh, we'll pull anchor and we'll get underway and I'll show you how we can use it to follow paths and move around the environment. So I've got two cameras going, so hopefully you can see my fingers. And I guess it's just an introduction to how the chart plotter works. You've got quite a few different options. Um, in the charts, you have nav chart, which is your sort of normal nav chart. You can pinch and zoom like, a, like your phone, or you can use these here to zoom in and out. And if you've moved it around too much, there's a stop panning, which will bring you back to your location. There is a fishing chart which I'll show you underway. It looks quite a bit different when you're, when you're moving around. The 3D chart also more for when we're underway. It's a very, it shows you all the terrain. Um, it's quite a difficult one to use. It does show you the beacons very well, which is very handy to use if you're traveling at night. Uh, I don't really prefer that one. And the last one is fisheye, which is really for depth finding. So I'll show you that underway. The other thing with a chart plotter like this, it is a depth finder. And if you're good at fishing, a fish finder. That's probably not my, uh, my best thing. I'm not the best at fishing, but it can do that if you know how to go fishing. Uh, this one does not have um, Garmin's true view. If you've used a few Garmin's, that side view. Uh, this just has your more traditional sonars. So we're at anchor here in 1.3 meters of water and you can see a bit of uh, something floating past there. You can also do split frequencies and, and other ways to look at your sonar. But probably the most useful thing with this device is the combos, which I use all the time, mostly this one, which gives you your chart plotter and your depth finder all in one. Something to talk about just with your depth finder is it doesn't work, the, the transducer is on the stern of the boat. So if you're hurtling along at 20 or 30 knots, you really can't depend on the depth finder to uh, tell you what the depth is. By the time it tells you how deep you are, or if you're in trouble, your propellers will have hit it. Uh, it's good for maneuvering around um, marinas, or if you've got to go through some sandbars, you take it down off the plane, go through it six to 10 knots, and the depth finder will certainly work for you. But Let's go back to how I'm using it right now, which is at anchor. And you can see here, I have a circle. You can see my plot here, and you can see a boundary circle. So that boundary circle I've set to the length of my anchor chain. It's a bit wider than my anchor chain, so if I ever dragged anchor, and you can check a video of us um, dragging anchor in a, in a southerly storm we had a few months ago, it will yell at you and put a big alarm out and if you're asleep you'll wake up um, but it is very handy now to set this I can we can go here and edit the boundary so if you touch the middle you can move the center point and set the center or if you want to edit the radius you're letting out more chain you can set the radius. So the radius obviously is you know, half the diameter. So if you've put out 20 meters of chain, you'll want to set the radius probably at 25 meters. To put in a boundary, you go to Info, User Data, Boundaries, New Boundary, and you want to do a circle. For some reason, it zooms you all the way out, so you zoom back in again. So you set the center of your boundary, and then you draw out your radius. 
Now one of the tricks with this also is that once you've done your radius you need to set the alarm. So your boundary can be any sort of boundary like you want to stay within that boundary or you don't want to know when you go outside that boundary. So you'll have the alarm on. That's the alarm sound. It's quite burnt into my brain that sound as I hear it at night. And I want to have it to exit. So if I exit that boundary I get an alarm. One thing you can do is also set the boundary a little bit smaller than your anchor chain and that means on the tide when you flick around to the other side of your anchor you will get the alarm and if it's at night you can come up check that your anchor's all set just to give you that peace of mind. So that's really how I use this while we're at anchor. Some of the other points you'll find within the Garmin also is tides and currents so you can check what your tides are going to be. You've got lots of stations in here so yeah, we can set the sea, seaway. Would note that just it is a weird way of riding it up the top. It's two next, so it's one hour twenty-two to the next high tide. We've got very shallow tides today, and six hours to the next low tide. And there's your tide times at the bottom. The Garmin, this Garmin, really has a lot of attributes that you can build in. If you've got a much bigger boat, you can do all sorts of different tie-ins with it. So you can go to the One Helm. So you've got, you can add video cameras, uh, VRB, you've got vessel monitors, which I don't have many of, but you can add in lots of different inputs into this system if you want to build it out to a bigger multi-screen display. You can also look for different services, so ramps and marinas, and it will show you what ramps and marinas are around, and you can do a navigate to, auto guidance, and it's going to give me a path to Runaway Bay Marina. Don't always trust those paths. As you can see right here, I don't know why it's deciding to bring you through this very shallow bit when there's the main channel is through there. So I wouldn't always trust the auto guidance, but I'll tell you about that later on when we're underway because you can make your own paths and your own tracks. So we'll get out of that. You'll see we've got quite a bit of this is our path we've had from last night. If you want to have a look at those paths or what we've done, tracks, they're called tracks, sorry. And you can clear the active one, which will clear everything off, so we'll get rid of all that messiness you've had um, from floating around all night. So we're going to clear that so we can lay a new track out as we head home. So let's have a look through some of the other menus. One thing I'll t talk to you about is in the settings, and I've showed you this before when we went through the power. This actually, when you keep it on all night, draws about one, one and a bit amps at normal display. So if you have your backlight up full, as I do right now, it's using about 1.4 amps per hour, or 1.4 amp hours. You can draw that down. It does get very difficult to see in the daytime, so just be aware of that. Um, I usually have it on auto, but set it up the way you'd like to set up um, everything that you need and depending on where you've got this, if you're in a closed console you might need more. There are beepers and alarms, there's lots of different things you can change um, on this unit. The other thing is this, you do need to upgrade your maps. There's a little SD card in here, in the side there, and you can upgrade the maps. Um, I haven't done that so far, but the maps around the Gold Coast boardwaters don't change too much. What we'll do now is we're going to get underway, um, pull up the anchor and so we can show you how the Garmin acts as a wayfinder and also how you can use it to, um, to check your depth. Alright, we'll stop there and catch you when we're underway. Okay, we're just about to, we've got the anchor up and you can see we're just about to exit this, this boundary, obviously under my power. So just pretend you're dragging anchor and you can see the boundary there. If you're dragging anchor we're just about to cross that boundary and you get a big warning telling you what to do and you can okay. Now we're out of that, out of that and we're on our way. So when I'm in these slow waters I usually go to a combo or you can set it as one of your favourites. So there we go you can see and you can always adjust the, adjust the zoom level. Now you can see I've got some contours there. Those contours aren't actually in the map. They're contours that you can actually map out for yourself. So I'll show you how to do that once we're underway. And you can see the sonar here. We're just moving along at a few knots because we're inside a marina. 
you can see how deep it is in the contours on the bottom and you can also see some structures as we move along. Now those other tracks I have are actually tracks that I've previously saved. So if, I, if we were going somewhere else, we'll go to the nav chart, info, and this is my user data, their tracks and their saved tracks. So just say we wanted to go up to Peel Island, you can select that one, you can see it, there's the track all the way up there to the north, and we can follow it either forwards or backwards. Backwards track it to go back to Peel Island, it's just calculating it because it's quite a way away. And that's a save track that I previously did. That's my track, it's not an auto guidance, and it's just taking a little while to work out how it goes. But once you're there, you can see it gives you a time of arrival, obviously at this speed, and there's it going off in that direction. And you can see how it goes all the way up to Peel Island. We don't want to do that, we just want to head home. And you can see it tracking our path. Now I'll just show you those contour lines in the menu, quick draw contours, start recording, and that'll, you'll need an SD card in there, and it starts building new contour lines. So I'll go, zoom in a bit, you can see the green spot around me, it's mapping the bottom of the ocean. So if you had some secret fishing spot or canals that do not have depth, depth information in them, like uh, our canals, then you can draw your own maps and, you, and it records it uh, and keeps it on your SD card. So that's your own personal sort of map of the, um, the bottom of the sea floor. When you want to stop that, quick draw, stop recording. Okay, I'll just show you a few other things while we're underway. We'll go back to home and our favourites, nav chart. So you can see us drawing a path there. If you're out late at night and it was difficult to see the beacons or some of the beacons were out or there's random sandbars that you need to drive around, that track is, is awesome. So you can actually just log it and follow it straight back to get your way home. I'll just show you some of those other views. So in, in charts, the 3D chart, you can see, for my mind, is a little bit too busy. Uh, there's lots of mooring points. You can see the markers here, and you can see them all the way down the, the channel there. You can see all the markers and their flashing rhythm. Uh, if it isn't at night and you need to know which marker in their flashing timing, that is a good one, but um, I find it a little bit too, it's a little bit too busy for my mind, um, and I don't often use it. The other view that I didn't, oops, the other view is the fishing 3D eye, which is a kind of weird one. It pretends like you're a fish. Um, so you can see the sea floor there. Hold on, just got... So those dots on the bottom are some waypoints um, from some of my tracks. But you can see it mapping the bottom floor there. I'm guessing this would be quite useful for fishing if you're out in deeper water than we are. Um, but not a particularly useful one. I guess it might be handy if you were um, going through some tight channels. And in sonar, we went through those. The smart modes, so for docking, the docking smart mode, once again, as I said, these units are designed to fit you know, wind sensors, engine sensors, cameras, a lot of other things. So for docking, that would be your camera array. And for fishing, that's a trolling, a trolling setup. Once again, not the best fisherman, so I don't really use that one. So there's lots of information also that you get from uh, the Garmin, and it collects it over time. So you've got your trip odometer, moving speed, max speed, which I'm pretty proud of for the Mary Fisher, 37.3 knots, which isn't too bad. And We've done over 848 nautical miles in Antoinette, which is quite impressive, I think. So there's lots of different ways you can set up the Garmin and use it, and it really does depend on how you use your vessel and, and you know, what you need to take care of. I'm continually changing these screens. This setup with the um, sonar and the chart is probably the one I use the most through the canals. 
but when you're out into deeper water obviously I don't need to know the depth or if you're cruising there's no need it's not worth putting the depth finder on because it won't capture anything that you need so the mark tab here is you can if you found a great fishing spot or a great anchorage you could mark that place and put in a symbol in there's multiple different symbols you can use and the last one over here is SOS hopefully you'll never have to use it I'm not going to press it now uh, it can send off a distress GPS signal and it can also put if you've had a man overboard it drops a, a GPS point at that exact point so you can return back to that if it's at night or something so they are quite a good system um, you know, in an emergency also just on the side there it does give you a lot of information and you can change how you look at that information I use knots that's our bearing time of day and depending on what view you use you get different information like you do see up here you've got your voltage uh, from your house battery so you can it's quite handy you can see that you're charging the battery there I know a few people have been asking me to go through the uh, our Garmin chart plotter here I hope that was useful there's lots of different things this unit can do uh, I use it you know, to serve our purposes for a lot of anchorage and to get through our um, channel system here on the Gold Coast I hope you like that video if you do please subscribe and I'll see you next time again on the rudder